Today is the day the Lord has made. It's a new day with new mercies. It's a day for worship. A day for Bible study. For family. And forgiveness. Today we're going to sing praises to God. And hear His word spoken. And we will even inspire to change our world for good. If you want to find freedom, healing, and hope in Jesus, this is the place. This is the place. This is the place for you. Welcome to Oasis. You belong here. I want to thank you for joining us this Easter weekend. We understand that there are plenty of places you could have chosen to be, but you decided to be with us, and we are grateful. Thank you for joining us during this celebration of the resurrected Lord. Thank you for deciding to be with us here. If you're online, thank you for joining us. We're grateful that you're listening in and watching. Today, we want to speak shortly on a topic, breaking the cycle, how the resurrection changes our story. I don't know if you have people in your life or perhaps you have experienced cycles Cycles are when you go through the same process over and over again. There are different cycles that we go through. Some people go through the crazy cycle. It could be the crazy cycle at work. I hate this job, but I need the money. So I go back again. (laughs) It could be the crazy cycle in your relationship. Why am I here? Why are they doing this to me? This is not the kind of person I want to be. This is not the kind of relationship I want to be in. It's over. I'm not doing this again. And then you're back in the same relationship. It could be crazy cycles of addiction. I'm never going to do this again. It's over. This is the last time. And you find yourself there again. I want to give you some good news today. Good news that I hope you can pass on to someone else. Good news that I hope you can believe in and claim on and hold on to on Monday, good news that will stay with you on Wednesday, good news that will impact you on Friday. The good news is that the cycle, whatever cycle it is, it could be generational cycles. It could be cycles that go beyond you, cycles that you find yourself in that you're still stuck in. The good news today is that your cycle is not your story. Whatever cycle you find yourself in, this is not who you are. This is not you. It is not your identity. Your cycle isn't you. Your cycle is something that's trying to keep you from being you. Your cycle wants you to believe that whatever mess you find yourself yourself in is your identity, that your struggle is you, but your struggle is not you. Easter changed your story. The God who shows up on the cross is the God who walked into your cycle. Mm, 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 mm. The reason why your cycle isn't you 
is not because your cycle doesn't exist. It is because, watch this, the God who made you took on the struggle that's trying to defeat you. He walked into your story instead of just taking away your story. If he simply took it away, it could come back. But by walking into your story, he is able to defeat the cycle from within. On that good Friday, as he hung on a cross for sins he did not commit, being accused for stuff he did not do, he took all of it. He took the crime. He was counted amongst the transgressors. He was counted amongst the criminals. He was beaten and punished and hurt and insulted, and he suffered the state penalty of death in order to redeem every cycle in this room. It says that while he hung on that cross, he knew that scripture had been fulfilled. The scripture that said that he, though sinless, would be counted amongst the transgressors, that he, though God, would be counted amongst the humans, that he, though perfect, would be counted amongst the imperfect. Those scriptures that said that he would hang on a tree for us, those scriptures were fulfilled. And so he said, in order to fulfill scripture further, he says, I am thirsty. And then they gave him sour wine to drink. And that was the last thing that needed to be accomplished. Because the psalmist says in Psalms 22, the psalmist says that when he drank that sour wine, the psalmist in Psalms 22 said, why have you forsaken me, God? Why am I being treated this way? Why is it that everyone has left me? No one is for me. They give me sour wine to drink. I yearn for help and they give me poison. The psalmist is talking about anyone and everyone who's ever been betrayed, who's ever been abandoned, who's ever been left behind. And Jesus, wanting to enter into that story, says the same words as the psalmist. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He says the same words as the psalmist. I am thirsty, knowing that they would give him sour wine to drink. He walks into the story of anyone who's ever been desperate, anyone who's ever been broken, anyone who's ever been abandoned, anyone who's ever been forsaken. He walks into our story and makes it his own. And then it says, Says in John chapter 19, verse 30, that when he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Whew. Let me help you. By repeating the words of the psalmist, by walking into the stories of those who had felt abandoned by God before, those who had felt forsaken, those who had felt that they had prayed and God had not heard them. Sound familiar? Those who had felt that they had cried, God, take this thing away from me. And it hadn't been done. By walking into that story, he says to every single person who has that story, that story is no longer your own. Let me give you mine instead. He walks into our story and he declares it is finished. Ooh, let me tell you why that's good. Let me tell you why that's good. Because your mind tells you, it doesn't matter how many times you quit, you'll be back. 
Hello? Mm, 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 mm. Your story tells you this is just a cycle. This is just who you are. It's never going to change. This is what happens to you. It doesn't matter how many times I'll see you again. But what Jesus does is by walking into our story, by taking on every single thing that we ever felt, every time we felt ashamed, every time we felt broken, every time we felt that we couldn't win, every time we felt the struggle was too much, by taking on our story, he walks into the story and declares it is finished. Oh, 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 let me. Oh, oh, oh. If he stood outside and tried to take you out, you might go back. If he never walked into it, he could not declare from within it, you're done. By walking into the mess, he can declare to the mess, it is finished. By walking into the addiction, he could declare, it is finished. By walking into the struggle, he can immerse himself, take it on and say, it is finished. This is over. This cannot impact you anymore. This is not your story. It is finished. Telestai, the Greek word that was declared, one word. One word translated, it is finished. Telestai, one word that changes our story. One word that makes the cycle not powerful enough to keep us. Telestai, it is finished, says this. Watch, 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 watch. watch. You can't out sin. God's saving. You're not powerful enough to sin as powerful as God is to save you. But by declaring it is finished, he diminished sin to say you no longer have power. You no longer have reign. You cannot control this story forever. This is no longer your narrative. Let me get the pen now. Let me finish the story. Telestai. The Greek word, it is finished. It is done. It has been performed. It has been accomplished. It's written in the Greek the air is perfect tense, a tense that we don't really have in English, that we don't fully understand. It's, it's not something that you and I would truly understand and comprehend because the language is different than ours. It is finished sounds good. It sounds awesome. It is finished. <laughs> but, 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 but you're, you're going to say, pastor, 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 Monday wasn't finished. Monday, I was struggling. It sounds good, and I want to say amen like everybody else, but I'm still in the mess. Come on, hello? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it's cute and nice to say amen and hallelujah. But when I go home, I'm still facing this thing. Easter sounds beautiful and church sounds nice. But what happens in the dorm room? What happens in my apartment? What happens at my home? Why is my marriage still messed up? Why am I still struggling with this addiction? Why did every time I said I'm not going to do it, I keep coming back? It is finished. Sounds cute. But it doesn't help me on Tuesday. It doesn't help me on Wednesday. I'm still struggling. You sound nice and I, I like your passion, but it's not finished for me. The reason why we struggle with this concept and we struggle with this understanding that, that what Jesus did on the cross was enough, it is because we are holding on to what's happening to us instead of what God is doing for us. I need you to know that even though sin is working, God is working harder. 
I need you to know that even if you feel inadequate, you are still sufficient. I I need you to know that your story does not define God's impression of you. Your struggle is not what is being looked at in order to determine your destination. It is finished, changed your narrative forever. And it doesn't matter that Tuesday there's still some leftover mess because God's story is bigger than your story. You are not that powerful. God is more powerful than your sin. Where sin increases, grace much more increases. The more you mess up, the more holiness God pours down. It is finished. Let me help you. Let me help you. It is finished means that what happened in the past is accomplished but the result of that past accomplishment continues to have impact today it is finished it's the kind of word you would say when you're closing on your house It is finished. It's been a long run. It's been hard. Come on, Austin. Better preach this thing with me. It, 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 it's been hard and, 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 and you didn't know if you could make it, but, but you got it done. You closed the paper, but it's, it's done. It's finished. It's over. But because of what happened in the past, you walk into your house every day. Oh, oh you didn't catch me, Austin. The, 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 the papers you signed happened yesterday, but the impact It results in everyday use of your home. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Telestai, it is finished, is what you would say at the end of the wedding. The the, the girl you you fell in love with in high school and you finally married her. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said I do, she said I do, and it sounds good. But guess what? Because you said I do, you get to have honeymoons every night. My wife goes, baby, it's a little cringe. She gave me that cringe look. Let me stop. Let me move over. You guys get to have breakfast together every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the event happened in the past, but you enjoyed the benefits every single day. When Jesus declared it is finished he's saying you are now complete you are now perfect the struggle is now over and every time the struggle comes back i will be there every time the cycle comes back i will give you victory so even though you fall down you get back up again it is finished now i know you're going i don't believe you pastor because i still still feel bad why why because you're still listening to the cycle instead of listening to your god you are letting the cycle shame you instead of letting god save you and here's what i mean because watch 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 here's what here's what here's what it says there is now no condemnation for those who sin no more for those who struggle no more for those who are perfect For those who are members at Oasis, I think it might have said that one. No, 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 no. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? 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 Why is there now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? Because 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says this. God, God, who did it? 
God. Who did it? You did it? Jose did it? No, no. Who did it? Who must we all respond to? So the one to whom we are held accountable is the one who did this. So who are you ashamed, who are you ashamed of? What are you ashamed of? Who are you trying to impress? Because the God who saw your sin said God made him who had what? Sin. To be what? Sin. To be what? Sin. He did not take on our sins, folks. He became our sin. And when he became the sin, he declared, it is finished. He who had no sin, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become. Is it there? Is it there? Put it back on. Put it back on. He who had no sin became sin for us so that where? In what? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become. We might what? Become the righteousness of God. So if I step into my cycle, I'm listening to the stories of my addiction. I'm listening to the stories of my difficulty. I'm listening to the stories of my struggle. And all it's telling me is this is who you are. I'm never going to get. You're never going to quit. You never, you never, you never, you never, you never, you never. That's the soundtrack. But when I come into Christ, there's a different soundtrack. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God made him who had no sin to be sin for me so that in him I might become the righteousness of God. God so loved me that he gave his one and only son for me so that if I believe in him, I will not perish, but I will have everlasting life. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. That's the soundtrack I hear. It's a different soundtrack when I am in Christ Jesus. That is, here it is. Every day, I must choose to ignore the story of my cycle and put on the story of my salvation. That is why it's called the helmet of salvation. That is, I protect my mind with my real story because all around me is the fake story. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Let me help you. Let me help you. Because I know some of you are going, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, but mm, I don't know. I'm only telling you what I do for myself. I'm only telling you what I do for myself. When, when I'm struggling, I have to remind myself of my true story. I have no need for shame because in Christ there is no condemnation. You have to know that story and you have to surround yourself with people who also know your story. I was at our young adult small group that meets on the second and fourth Wednesdays and we we're talking about scripture and I was telling them my own struggle through this season. And I was sharing with them, well, the, the, the fleshly me, this is how I feel. The, the person that's hopeful and, and we have, you know, we, we have faith. We were reading the scripture that said that, that, that we, I no longer, the life I now live in Christ, I no longer live in the flesh, but I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I said, yes, yeah, sometimes, yeah, I, I love that and I, and I believe in that, but the fleshly me, I mean, makes, it makes me go, man, I'm scared, God, I'm worried. Here are the moves because I, I have to try to control this thing. I have to try to control the outcome. I, I can't just wait and let someone else determine my destiny and, and what's going to happen to me and this and that. And I was telling them this in our small group. And then one of the young adults, 
She said, but Jose, the Holy Spirit lives within you. You are not of the flesh. You have been redeemed and rescued. You have been restored in Christ and you have holy desires. We were reading the scripture in Ezekiel 37 where God is saying, prophesy to these bones. Amen. Oh Lord, I got to go. I got to go. The, the prophet was, was shown very dry bones that were dead. And God said, prophesy to these bones. Oh, son of man, prophesy, breathe into these bones. And as she shared that word with me, my mindset changed from, oh, I have a fleshly side and a holy side to know I am holy because of what God has done for me. I have holy desires because of what God has done for me. There is no room for the flesh. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ that lives in me. She prophesied unto dry bones, and this is what you must do to your crazy cycle. I am not this story. I am not addicted. I do not deal with this. This might be happening to me now, but God has redeemed me. I am restored. I am a holy one of God. I have a future. God is coming back for me. I am no longer condemned. I got to share the story that God told me. That's how you break the crazy cycle. Is you let the crazy cycle know it is finished. It is finished. Hebrews 10, 14. Here's how this is explained. Here's how you know this is true. Here's how you know what I just said isn't a lie. It's not something I just said to make you feel good. It's not something that I just said to, to preach a nice message. It says, for by how many sacrifices? For by one sacrifice he has done what? Did Pastor Jose say it? Here's what scripture the author of Hebrews, here's what he's saying to people who are waiting on the return of Jesus. He's saying, you don't have to worry because by one sacrifice, when he declared, it is finished, he has made you perfect for how long? Wow, I don't think you believe it. You don't sound like people who believe it. By one sacrifice, he has made perfect for how long? God does not exist in time. I'm about to help you. I'm about to help you. God does not exist in past, present, and future. God does not exist in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, uh, God does not exist in time. Time was created for your benefit. <laughs> God lives outside of time. So what you call future sin is just sin to God. You didn't catch it. At one moment, in a single time, he entered into time and declared your mess over. But because he exists outside of time, when he rolled up your sin, it wasn't the sin you did before and then the sin you did after. It was all of it. There, there is no later for God. So it was all the sin from all the ages, from all the centuries that ever would have ever existed. It was all the mess that he took and wrapped up. All the times you fell. All the times you said you'll never do it again. All the moments you 
wanted to give up, but you couldn't. It was the Monday sin. It was the Tuesday sin. It was the Wednesday mess. It was the Friday. This is the last time, God. I'm never going to do this again, God. It, it was the Thursday. I, I can't believe this is me here again. It was all of it that he really took into one big thing and he put it all on his son. It, it pleased the father, Isaiah says, to bruise him. He took all of it and threw it on his son, past, present, and future. And he declared, this is done. It is finished. No more. And by one sacrifice, he has made you, Sharon, perfect forever. You, Austin, perfect forever. You, Deborah, he has made you perfect forever. Missy, he made you perfect forever. Rachel, he, he made you perfect forever. Tiffany, he made you perfect forever. Why? Because he won't stop working on you. He made perfect forever those who are being made holy. He made you perfect forever because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day he's working on you. By one sacrifice, he already declared it perfect, though. He's already made it perfect, and he, he helps us understand this thing. He says to the disciples before he dies, he says to them, you are already clean. Because of the words I declare to you, you are already clean. He's talking to Peter, and he says, you're about to betray me. But he had already declared Peter what? Clean. And so even though he's saying to Peter, you're about to betray me, he says, but, but when thou art converted, when you catch up to what I've declared, help your brothers. Because what God has said will never come back to him void. God called Abram the father of faith while he was still lying. God called David a man after his own heart while he was running after women. God called Gideon, O oh, brave man of valor, while he was hiding in a cave. Oh, Lord. God never calls you what you are. He calls you how he sees you. When Jesus declared it is finished, he's saying no cycle can keep me from you. No mess can get rid of me. It is over. It is done. It's your job to surrender it to me now. Give it up. Because I've already gotten rid of it. And in the process, I'm making you holy. Isn't this a confusing text? He made perfect forever those who are being made. I thought we were perfect. Yeah, I've declared you perfect, but now I got to actually make you what I said about you. That's how God works. God said, let there be light, and then light came. God said, let the waters team up, and then he made it. That's how God does. He says what he's going to do. He already said it about you. It's done. Now you have to believe it and become the thing he knows he can make you. And you're in, in front of your rows and rows in front of you. If you're online, you can do this at home. Just grab a piece of paper. We want to pray over the things that God is declaring it is finished today. I want you to, to just write, just write, just write on the cards. There's cards, there's pens, there's papers. I want you to surrender the thing that's trying to hold on to you. I want you to write it on this card and give it up. I want you to, to say to God, I know I can't do this, but I know you can. I know I won't be able to master this thing, but I know you are able to. 
I want you to write down on this on this card whatever whatever is finished <laughs> whatever God has delivered you from I want you to write it on this paper today today is the day you write the receipt for the thing God did <laughs> Today's the day you put on paper, it's over. <laughs> it, it's over. It's done. This is it. I, I surrender. I give this thing up. It's no longer mine to deal with. I'm not the one that's going to take care of this anymore. God's going get, to get rid of this thing. This is your receipt. For a while, scholars saw the word telestai or tele in, 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 in a few Egyptian receipts. They, they saw the same word and they thought perhaps... This is the word, this, this word that Jesus said was on a couple of receipts and they thought it meant paid in full. Some folks on social media, even this weekend, grab it and they're like, "Oh, look, tell us tight means paid in full. There are just receipts. I mean, the word was very close to the word that's used, but what they're saying was the tax has been paid. Today, the devil's been taxing you on stuff you don't own anymore. I need you to hear me. I need you to believe me. I'm begging you. Do not walk out of here with the stuff you no longer own. You don't own it because he became it on the cross and killed it there. I need you to tell the devil the tax has been paid. It is finished. It is over. You have no right to come talk to me about this again. You have no right to come tax me again. It is over. You have a problem, see my savior. You have a problem, talk to Jesus. He's got a few words for you. But for me, I'm done. Write it as they sing, bring it up here. Write it down as they sing, bring it up here. Don't walk out of here with it. Hand the tax over, let them know it's done. It's done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to tell you one time I went to court. I was speeding. I was, I was guilty. Yeah, I was speeding. I know you don't want to hear stuff like this, but I was guilty. I was speeding. And I remember going to court and I was praying the whole time. And I spoke to the prosecutor. The prosecutor came to me, spoke to me and said, hey, how do you want to deal with this? He said, well, you don't have that much, you know, there's nothing on your record. This is the first time, you know, what, what, are you, what happened? I shared with him what, what, what was going on. I was speeding to get to my mom. She's diabetic and she was at the airport. She was calling me saying she's hungry. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get there fast and I'm speeding. And this is what I mean. say, okay, okay, I understand, I understand, I understand. I said, I'm sorry. He said, it's okay. He handed me a piece of paper. It was a receipt. He said, just go ahead and, and, and pay this at the cross, pay, pay this at the, at the counter. And, and on the paper it said, no le proscito. This Latin word that we will not prosecute you. It's not not guilty. It's not no condemnation. It's, there's never a trial. It didn't exist. When I handed the tax receipt and gave it over, pay my little thing, the lady smiled at me and said, that'll be all, Mr. St. Fart. I walked away, light, happy, got home. My mom said, what happened? I said, they decided not to do anything. They didn't press anything. There was nothing on my record. There's nothing to ever show that this even existed. It's all done. It's complete. It is finished. I handed in my receipt. I walked away. Write this thing on this paper. Hand in your receipt and walk 
away free. Walk away free. You are not condemned. In Christ Jesus, it is finished. you to stand with us as we praise our risen Savior, the miracle he does in each of our lives. He turns what's bad in our lives for his glory. He uses it for his glory. He restores.
with me. Hey God, thank you so much for meeting us where we are. God, I want to pray over these note cards that are in front of me. God, everyone in this room has something that they're struggling with, and even if they wrote it down or not, God, I pray that they'd leave it all here, that they walk out those doors, and they know they are redeemed, and they are loved, and there's nothing that you won't do for them, because you died on the cross for them, God. And so I pray that you be with every family here, every household represented, that they remember how great of a sacrifice you made and how much you love each of them. Please be with everything. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this community. I pray that everyone feels they belong here because they do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to thank you for just coming out. Say hi to the person next to you. Introduce yourself, all that good stuff. And have an amazing Easter. See you next week.